Over the years, I've been accused by certain internet commenters of being a, quote, Nike fanboy. And while I've been overwhelmingly positive about the Mercurial series for a number of years, and rightfully so, they've been overwhelmingly good. If we're talking about Nike's current lineup, while I don't think the Tiempo or Phantom GT are bad boots, they're not really my cup of tea and I can't say I would necessarily recommend them over other options in the same category. However, inside this box, I have the latest and greatest from Nike. It's a Mercurial and it's really good. This is the Nike Mercurial Vapor 14 Elite in the launch Dragonfly colorway, bearing the same retail price that the Vapor has had for the last several years of $250. And it sees a pretty significant change despite a lot of design similarities from the model that it replaces. And this is one of those boots that I was both excited and nervous about because it sees Nike take a step back in order to take a step forward. And what I mean by this is the Vapor 14 Elite as well as the Super Fly 8, they both feature the same upper, sees a very interesting hybrid of the Flyknit uppers that we've been used to getting on the Mercurial series for the last couple of years and have progressed tremendously, but it also incorporates some elements from the Tajian synthetic days of the Mercurial series, most notably the Vapor, the last Tajian synthetic Vapor being, of course, the Vapor 11. The question is, does this concept work? We've had a lot of longtime Mercurial fans, including myself, crying for the return of a synthetic upper on a Mercurial Vapor. We now have it. The question is, do we as consumers actually know what we want and has Nike delivered? Well, to make a long story short, the answer to both of those questions is yes. So what I'm gonna do in this video is a detailed tech breakdown of the new Vapor 14 Elite. We'll take a look at how they fit and feel on feet as well, and essentially cover everything that's new in comparison to the outgoing model, where with the Vapor 13, they really set the bar extremely high. The question is, have they raised the bar even further? So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the little pop-up in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $250 retail price. Very quickly, I wanna talk extras, and there's really only one extra thing that comes with the Elite models of the Mercurial, whether you go for the Vapor or the Superfly. It comes in the same gray and black Nike Elite box that you get with all their top end models, but they do have a brand new string bag design. It's physically the same string bag we're used to getting, but you can see on the one side, it kinda of has this translucent material, then it has the laid flat kind of blueprint of the upper, which looks really cool. The bag also has ACC technology, as you can see so if it gets rained on it's gonna still get wet I don't know why that's there it does have the mismatched strings one side gray one side purple one side orange and then the back of the bag is solid pink with the big mercurial logo this is in my opinion an extremely well executed string bag it matches the boots really nicely and just has some good style to it it gets a string bag rating of 10 out of 10.72. Now I don't wanna to talk too much about the way that these look because I kinda of did that in the video I made on launch day, but I have to give Nike credit where credit is due. They have this innate ability to make people care about elements that they wouldn't normally care about at all. And that is the internal liner of a football boot, which is crucial to overall performance, but because it's inside the boot and you don't normally see it, people tend not to care. But when you make the upper translucent and make the liner kind of a highlight feature technology that you can see with the colorway, people all of a sudden care about something that they never cared about before. And what's kind of interesting about the liner on the Vapor 14, which is a huge aspect of this new Vapor Posit Upper, is it's not actually that different from what we had on the previous generation Mercurial. And when I say not that different, what I really mean is it follows the same base concept, where if you get a good look at the liner, especially this pink section through the midfoot, there are perforations running through the liner itself just to reduce some unnecessary weight and material. You have perforations across the top of the toes as well. But if you look at the inside of a Mercurial Vapor 13, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see that the lining material 
doesn't have the exact same perforations, but it's the same general idea. The main difference that you're gonna find in the liner, and I think part of the reason they were able to maintain a very similar feel despite such a different upper, is instead of being lined in a super thin synthetic material, almost like a really thin plastic, they've lined this boot with the vapor posit upper with a thin microfiber that just ends up feeling really, really soft, has a little bit more pliability to it. So effectively what they've done is they've reversed the upper on the Vapor 13, where the soft material would normally make up the majority of the upper, that's your flying it, then you have a structured internal liner. Instead, the soft material is on the inside of the Vapor 14, and then your structured layer, or the harder material, is on the outside as a synthetic. They've effectively inverted the Vapor 13 to create the Vapor 14. As for the upper in its entirety, it's a new material from Nike that they're calling Vapor Posit, where you can see the name of the material in significantly smaller font than the ACC logo, which is clearly more important to highlight than the actual upper, but that's Nike for you. Nonetheless, it's made up of a variety of layers of material, which again, is not different from past mercurial models, but it is different in that this does trend back towards the Tasian synthetic days in that when you compare this directly to the Flyknit upper of the outgoing Vapor 13 and Superfly 7, this does have a more raw, pingy, arguably truer barefoot sensation. And that's gonna be one of the main differences that you're gonna find if you're switching from the Vapor 13 into this brand new Vapor 14. Now we'll start from the inside and work our way out as far as the layers go, because internally you do have that microfiber lining material with perforations throughout, through the midfoot as well as the forefoot. And this is what they're calling their Avail Q lining, which of course is highlighted in a variety of different colors on the back side of the liner, which of course you can see from the outside of the football boot because of the translucent synthetic that has been placed over top. Now, they've highlighted certain sections, uh, mainly this band in blue through the forefoot that people love to compare to the Nitro Charge. They did the same thing with the Puma Future Z. That was really the first boot to highlight an actual band, but it's definitely not the first football boot to utilize extra structure in this area of the foot. It just happens to be highlighted and people seem to like it. Supposed to be inspired by the wings of a dragonfly. I don't quite see it, but again, Nike's marketing doesn't always make a ton of sense. It's just there to hype people up, which they've done successfully. The one thing that I will say about this liner that is kind of interesting is if you look closely here at the start of this blue band, you can actually see a breakup in the liner where it's been stitched to this pink section, and that's both on the lateral and medial side. But from there forward and from there back, there doesn't seem to be any other transitions that are visible between all the different colors of supposed structure elements that have, again, we're led to believe been placed together for various different reasons. It seems to be all one piece of material with just certain areas highlighted in different colors. So it's really difficult for me to say whether or not there are physically extra layers like in the toe box where the red is. It does, definitely feels like there's more structure there, but you can't actually see the layers because they're so thin. If they're there, I guess we're just gonna have to trust that they are. Nonetheless, the structure seems to be there in all of the right spots. And from a responsiveness standpoint, I would say that they are on par with the excellent performance of the Vapor 13. Sitting on top of that liner, you're gonna find a combination of engineered mesh as well as what Nike is calling Titan Synthetic. Basically a replacement for Tejin that is a little bit different than that material because obviously it's thinner and the structure of the boot is more dependent on the liner and the mesh along with the synthetic. So the actual synthetic portion of the upper is thinner than anything that we've seen previously with just straight up Tajian synthetic, which also had a liner, but this is obviously different. Now, what's interesting about these in person that you don't really pick up in pictures is the engineered mesh itself. You can see the size of the rectangles that make up the grid running basically from the heel all the way until you get to that blue band through the forefoot where you can see the rectangles get significantly tighter and then as you get past there into the toe box and forefoot area, they kind of become a medium size. So you have three different patterns of engineered mesh where you want more or less structure, more or less flexibility and pliability. And you don't really feel these transitions in structure. It ends up feeling pretty seamless when the boots are on feet, but it is a very interesting way of building a football boot nonetheless. And some of that flying it technology kind of carrying over where they're able to, I guess, individually put structure in certain spots where they feel like they need it most. And then of course you're gonna have 
your Duragon wet traction element on the surface along with ACC. I'm not sure why there are two elements that focus on grip on the ball in wet weather playing conditions. I guess ACC is for all conditions, but I will say on the ball, these do feel slightly grippier than the Vapor 13, and the texture provided by this grid material or the engineered mesh is more significant than I was expecting, but in terms of grip levels, I wouldn't expect anything too different from the outgoing Mercurials. Vapor posit aside, they have not entirely ditched flying it because filling in the top portion of the foot to create that one piece upper is the familiar flying it material that we're using used to seeing on the top end Mercurial series. It features the same central lacing system with very thin elasticated flying it that does a good job of giving you this seamless wrap across the top of the foot. And then of course, with the laces tied tight, it's tied directly to the structure within the liner and the rest of the upper it gives you that signature Mercurial locked in feel and tight sensation that you'd expect from one of their top end boots. And then of course, this being the Vapor, it does flow into a low cut design where they have somewhat controversially added this little heel tab at the back. I personally love the way that it looks. Is it completely unnecessary? Absolutely. And a lot of people were concerned about this being kind of a, a blister machine, if you will. But I really like the way that they've done this in that it's way more flexible than I was expecting it to be. And they've also done it in such a way where it's all glued. There's no stitching around the edges of the tab itself. It's just stitched to the back of the boot. So again, totally unnecessary. I don't think it's adding to the comfort of the boot, but I didn't find it to be an uncomfortable element or a blister machine in any way at all. Although it must be said, if you like to play in low cut socks, which I personally do not recommend, if this is rubbing against bare skin, just like anything, it could potentially lead to blisters. So it's something to look out for. Just like the previous generation, they still feature an internal plastic heel counter that seems to be about the same shape as what they had before. And then the heel liner has technically been reworked. It's still the same kind of microfiber material, similar amount of padding as well. You'll notice these little dots that almost look like grip texturing towards the top of the heel liner. It's a little bit more fancy than what they did on the previous generation, but they are still micro perforation. So there's no added grip. It's just there again to cut a little bit of material out of the heel liner, not something that you'll actually feel or notice. It's lined in that same microfiber along the sides of the ankle as well. And then the insole is fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. It also remains unchanged aside from the tech specs list, which we'll get into in just a second. It's still technically a Nike grip insole, which effectively means nothing. It just feels like a regular mesh. And then it's made from a single layer of this yellow foam with this little hard black foam piece that has the same pattern as what you're gonna find on the underside of the sole plate to help lock it in place. And just for the fun of it, let's go over the tech specs listed on the insole one through seven with one through seven being highlighted on the upper of the football boots. Not sure if this is something that's gonna continue with every single colorway moving forward. But at number one, we have the Avail Q aligner, which is listed right here as the pink area of the liner. Technically, that's the whole thing. At number two, you have the speed band, which is highlighted right here in blue, kind of a sub element of the Avail Q liner. Then you have your vamp lining at three, which is right here. Again, just another part of the Avail Q liner. I'm not sure why they're listing them all as individual elements. You have your toe reinforcer listed as number four, which is this red strip around the toe, pretty self-explanatory. The speed collar package, which I don't entirely understand, it's highlighted here in orange. I'm assuming that just means the low cut design of the Vapor. Maybe it's the orange piece, I don't really know. Then you have your speed wings as number six, which this one really I don't understand. It's these little pieces that they've inserted on the surface. They're just kind of thin plastic on either side. They serve no purpose as far as structure. They kind of just border the edge of the internal heel counter, but apparently these are speed wings, I guess for maybe better aerodynamics or something like that. And then number seven you have here in flying it. It actually says flying it and that's just the flying it across the top of the foot. Moving to the base, Nike have also made some pretty significant changes, at least visually, where it's no longer a true split sole because you now have this spine running through the middle of the midfoot that connects the forefoot and heel stud plates. And I was a little bit confused by this design choice because it just seems like extra material for no reason at all. It doesn't seem to add much in the way of rigidity, but I do think it's covering up the seam through the midfoot. And the reason for that is because of this new vapor posit upper where it still wraps your foot 360 degrees. But if we look at the construction of the flying it upper on the Mercurial Vapor 13, it's a more pliable material, which I think gives them more freedom to kind of wrap it around the foot and then just have this seam running all the way through. You can very clearly see it here and then through the hole 
in the heel stud plate, where if you look at the construction of this boot, I can guarantee you that the seam is underneath the spine right here, and there's no seam through the middle of the heel stud plate. So I'm assuming it probably wraps around and then is underneath this heel stud plate. That's where everything is connected. And then they just put this little extra insert of material so there's no visible seam. So it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. I'm not sure if it was entirely necessary, but I think that's Nike's logic behind using this extra piece because it still has the anatomically shaped sole plate that runs from heel to toe. That's what's providing the majority of the structure through the midfoot. And the sole plate as a whole still feels very much, I don't want to say exactly the same, but extremely similar where it's still an aero track design where you have this kind of chevron in a forward facing direction through the forefoot. If anything, I'll say that this feels slightly more flexible than the Vapor 13, but it is a very small difference. Otherwise, the same great anatomic shaping to it gives you a very connected sensation to the boot. Doesn't feel any thicker or anything like that. And then the stud pattern, it's pretty much exactly the same. This of course being the FG variation. The only thing that's changed is some of the little add-on pieces at the point of the Chevron, mainly through the forefoot. If you look at this, it has that little extra point right there. It's kind of just more of an actual Chevron or a V shape on all of the studs on this new variation. Exact same length though. And in terms of what you can actually feel from a traction standpoint, it's still pretty much the most aggressive stud pattern you can get. No difference in terms of overall performance that you're gonna notice. And then there's the weight. It's a mercurial, it's a speed boot. You expect them to be light and they are. The question is, are they lighter than the model they replace? New upper material, that's potentially lighter, but they have added this spine to the sole plate, which probably adds more weight than takes it away. Nonetheless, in a size 9.5 US, you can see that the Vapor 14 Elite weighs in at 7.3 ounces, the equivalent of 206 grams, which is technically more than the Vapor 13 by roughly five grams or so. It is a very small weight increase. And in general, you're not gonna notice the weight difference between those two boots. So here they are on feet paired with some Royal Blue Pure Grip Socks, which is my own brand of grip socks available in a wide variety of colors for the very affordable price of just $14.99 a pair. If you're interested in some for yourself, the website to go to is www.puregripsocks.com. That'll be linked down below. But I think what's most surprising about these boots or what a lot of people are gonna be, I guess, kind of shocked with when they first put these on, especially if you had the Vapor 13, is how similar they feel despite the new Vapor Posit upper in hand feeling a lot more plasticky and raw and maybe not quite as pliable. And I will say that it's noticeable that this is a slightly stiffer upper, especially out of the box. But after three minutes of wear, once you've kind of gotten over the fact that they're brand new mercurials, they end up feeling almost identical to the outgoing Vapor 13. So from a comfort perspective, there's an argument to be made that these are maybe not quite as comfortable because the upper does lose a little bit of its pliability and its bend when your foot is actually moving with the upper. But in general, the comfort has been maintained at a very high level to the point where I would definitely say, if we're considering this a synthetic mercurial vapor, it is the most comfortable synthetic mercurial vapor that Nike have ever produced, which is absolutely a good thing. As far as fit is concerned, what's also kind of interesting is they haven't seemingly changed the shape from the Vapor 13, so it's pretty much identical in that regard. But this upper, again, very different. It still sits on your foot really nicely. It wraps your foot good. There's no ugly creases because of the difference in pliability. In general, it fits and feels just like a Vapor 13. So it still has that tight fit overall. If you've worn Mercurials in the past, you kind of know what to expect. And as long as you don't have super wide feet and you don't mind that tighter fit, these are gonna fit most people very comfortably. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order some for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, should you upgrade from the Vapor 13 to the new Vapor 14? And as much as I like what Nike have done here, I think the honest answer to that question is that you don't have to if you don't want to. And the reason why I say that is because they set the bar so high with the Vapor 13 that I was always concerned that the Vapor 14 was going to be a step backwards. Luckily, I don't think that's the case. What I will say is in terms of objective performance, they've definitely matched the Vapor 13. I don't think it's any better. I don't think it's any worse, but there is an argument to be made that the full flying upper of the Vapor 13 is slightly more pliable. It's that little bit softer 
And for that reason, depending on your preference, of course, it might end up feeling slightly more comfortable than the Vapor 14. With that said, if you're a fan of the Tejan Synthetic Mercurial Days, while this isn't quite a Vapor 11 or a Vapor 10 or a Vapor 8 or insert your favorite Mercurial Vapor model here in terms of overall feel, it's definitely more raw than the full flying at uppers that we've been getting on the Vapors for the last couple of generations. And they do have more of that true mercurial, I guess, experience on offer than what we've had from kind of the flying it era of the Mercurial series. They're still a top speed boot. They're definitely boots that I can strongly recommend, but I think it's more of a step sideways, or I guess it's a Mercurial. It's more of a step over from the Vapor 13 rather than a step forward. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, First link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal retail price. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.